Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dub Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1968 Chevelle Nomad station wagon back on the road that hasn't been running for, for near 30 years. Duff and I were hanging out on the Facebook Marketplace. The gentleman had these tractors, an Oliver and a Farmall. I don't know tractors. Oh, I know it needs a starter, because we know starters. Now in the background, I saw this Chevelle front clip. Everybody likes Chevelles, including myself, but I can't usually afford them. So I said, hey, is that station wagon for sale in the back? And he says, yeah, make me an offer. Long story short, here I am. Said it was his grandpa's car. Use it for uh, fetching up groceries. It's been off the road since 97, so what's that? 25 years she's been parked. Looks like it had some racing stripes at one point. Tree must have fell on the hood there, or fender. She's a 307 automatic, add-on air conditioning. It's got a window or two knocked out. Somebody painted over the rust with some black paint, so that's awesome. Oh, this whole valance is missing. It's a Nomad Custom. There's the add-on air down there, no tilt. How many miles are on it, Duff? 34. Since this thing was on the road for almost 30 years, I'm guessing it's got 134,000. A little soggy in the rear quarters. Crank down rear window. Other than that, it's got a pretty good whiskey dent right there. And right there, in that broke out window. It ain't too bad. Must have had the visor on the back. Anywho, that tire don't stay up, he said. He was kind enough to come and mow us a path. What a guy. Looks like somebody had this door open and backed up or something hit it and wrapped her around. That is unfortunate. Pretty good whiskey dent there. I don't know much about these Chevelles, mainly because I can't afford them. My dad had a bunch when I was a kid, but yeah. Let's get this thing loaded up. It's windy. It's bad weather maybe coming, so. What do you think? Should we get this loaded up? Get home? Oh, you're good help. You're good help, Bib. Here, here, look professional. Here you go. Let's fix your tag. Cool. Appreciate what it. is that? 3X? You losing weight or what? He needs to get rid of those bibs because that's all he does is keep snacks in those pockets. Putin doesn't know that. That's what they're for. You're a lot of help too, Duff. Well, we got the Nomad all tied down. Here's your bullish popsicle stand. Duff said there's some other junk we gotta check out though over here. Oh, yes, steel fence posts. They're a favorite. In minivans, and camper vans. He said this one sold 71 or two Chevrolet Dually flatbed. So she's got a 350 in it, similar to our ramp truck. Factory chicken chasers. Oh yeah. Typical cab rot. Look at this. Jim. 55 Chevy. Missing the front bumper. Eyebrows are rusted out. Not a bad car. DD Speed Shop? Uh, DD Speed Shop. Yeah. DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop? DD Speed Shop. Diddy Speed Shop, Diddy Speed Shop. Oh, got a chrome reverse in there. A couple of them. Looks like there's some small block parts. Oh, somebody cut a hole in the floor. Must have put a four speed in it. Or at least converted the three speed. Doesn't look like there's a tranny in it anymore. I wonder if this was somebody's hot rod back in the day. We're not gonna open the hood. He's gonna check, see if it's available. He said a lot of this stuff got sold. What are you hunting? And then, Got a 35-6 Dodge truck here. 34s had suicide doors, fives and six, same cab, but they don't have suicide doors. There's a pretty nice little unit here. What do you think, Duff? Checking her out. He's excited. Then a little cab over. 60s, 70s Chevrolet truck. Cheap off from the barn, all the goodies. Back half of an Astro van. All right. 
get out of here now that you're all stinky. Energy for days. Well, we made her home. The guy said his grandpa's name was Wesley. So, I mean, we already got Watch West work. So I guess we could have another Wes in our life. But yeah, let's get this thing so it rolls a little bit better. He stuck this tire on it. It doesn't hold air for very long. And this tire over here doesn't hold air for very long. So, you know me, I freaking hate flat tires. And so does the duffel up, I guess. Let's get these tubed up. Oh, must have been driving her in the winter. He had some diggers on the back. Oh yeah. Well, we got her unloaded. Nobody died. These tires, they're uh, Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Snow tires, what do they call them? They got some fancy name for them. I don't know. And they're uh, 215, 75, 14, so they're actually radials. Oh, there you go, the Hercules. Poly Snow MS. I don't know what MS stands for. It's probably not multiple sclerosis, but I was kind of surprised that they weren't the old bias flies. Well, I'm glad we didn't smash nothing up. Nobody died unloading the old Nomad. The hubcap didn't want to go back on. I didn't want to bang it up because those are like my favorite hubcaps ever. I really like those 68 Chevelle caps. Now I know what they fit. So I'm gonna keep my eye out for some more. All right, let's get after her. Well, it's uh, smoldering, I don't know. It was 110 degrees in South Dakota, so probably only 100 here today. Just got done working on a late model, you know, the 06 Grand Prix, fixing the infamous coolant elbow finger on a customer car, which I said I wouldn't do customer work anymore. But anyway, it was a hot, miserable job. Oh, check out the new merch. For all you Ford folks and four wheel drive folks, we got the 71 Ford F100 with duffel abacus hanging out the back. Check it out down below. We just released it last week. So hot off the press get them while you can so we can uh, keep the shop along with selling merchandise and fixing late models gotta keep the lights on well should we check this thing out finally here it is we were looking at this and it looked like somebody had swapped the valance at one point you know because it's got the racing stripes maybe it came off an ss but if you look real close you can see those lines continue onto the hood so who knows the history on this 68 Chevrolet Nomad. It's got a pretty dang nice grill and bumper. Valance, it's got a little whammy in it. Whammy! Whiskey dent on the passenger side, of course. And the uh, dog legs are rotted off on both sides. Those are radials. They look like bias flies, but they are radials. They're uh, 215, 75, 14 if you wanted to know the size. This whole fender is just kind of whammoed up, but we can knock that out. Somebody open the door way too far and there's a little rust in the dog leg down there it's a noma custom it's kind of like the nova but it's a noma so for anybody that doesn't think that they made a chevrolet nomad after 1957 they made them well into the 60s and i think they even made them into the 70s but i don't know here's a 68 to prove it it's got the fwanger antenna fwanger windshield's got some cracks in it still got the og stainless wipers on arms on it though and blades and whatnot. Obviously, it's a post car. They did make some hardtop station wagons, not in 68, but I think like a 57 Buick, they made a Ford hardtop station wagon. I think Mercury made some in the 60s. There's probably some other companies that made them, but hardtop station wagons. Freaking mint. Anyway, it's got the uh, key guard there. 
you know, so when you put your key in, you don't scratch it up with the bow tie on it. Clearly a factory Chevrolet accessory, right, Duff? Somebody must have been concerned about the rust down below, so they painted it black to fix it. And then same with over the fenders, and they did a, a real good job of just taping it off in a nice arch, straight line, whatever you want to call it. Rear quarters are rusty. So it probably needs a quarter there. It's got a little, little scuff there. Had the vent, what do you call that? The wing on the back, and that's supposed to keep dust from blowing back in, or would bring air back in to keep the people in the back seat cool. I don't know. I think this is how you roll the rear window down if it wasn't stripped out. And uh, yeah, lock the tailgate. Back here, it's a true nomad though. Speaking of true, is it a true dual exhaust? Where did that term even come from? Like, I feel it goes way back to when there was no faux dual exhaust like there was in like the 06 Grand Prix. True dual exhaust. I had somebody tell me that on a, look at like a 62 Lincoln Continental. Those cars are pretty cool. Suicide door, had the 462 in it. We just wanted the 462. And the kid who was probably our age at the time said, yeah, it's got true dual exhaust. And we're like, as opposed to what else did they have in the 60s? I think people just like saying true duels. Anywho, uh, either we're missing a tailpipe or this thing's a single. Uh, it does have the backup lights in the bumper. I don't know if that was an option. It's probably standard in 68. <sighs> Looks like she was sold. We were looking at this earlier. I think it says Deadwood Motor Company on it. Deadwood Motors, something like that. I feel like when we clean it up, yeah, it says Deadwood something, sales and service. So I'm guessing Deadwood, South Dakota. Dent in the tailgate. That's the thing with wagons, they're always dented up because old people drove them or nothing against women drivers, but station wagons usually got a lot of dents. And it's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of body there to bang up too, so maybe that's the deal. Then again, Clark Griswold had a station wagon, so they're pretty awesome. If you think you hate it now, wait till you drive it. You think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. This quarter panel is real whammied up. Something fell on it there. I wonder if that's what got the glass. Who knows? Oh my gosh, locking gas cap. I hate these. Who designed these? And I guarantee the key is missing for that. Looks like the keys are just entirely missing. So pretty excited about that. So I don't know why there's a spare pair of taillights back here, but they do say 68 Chevelle wagon on them. So maybe when they schmucked it, they broke that taillight out and got some from the junkyard, who knows? I'm guessing so, but this one is missing the lens. We got a spare distributor cap. Looks like here's the package it came in, so maybe it's got a brand new one on it. Foreshadowing, I don't know if this is our fan shroud. Did they have plastic fan shrouds in 68? Nope, it says 3.8 liters. So who knows what that's off of. 1981 model year with a 3.8. Nothing really good in 1981 with a 3.8, I'm guessing. A G body maybe? She's been busted out for a while because it's, Wearing into that plastic. All the paint's burnt off of that inner structure. I'm guessing that glass is gonna be a little hard to find. Hopefully they reproduce it. For whoever wants to own this thing, because we already got one station wagon, the 64 Impala that we never drive. Have yet to drive it this summer other than when we did our video on it. So hopefully we can get this video cranked out this week so we can go enjoy our own station wagon. Yeah, probably won't happen. All the hubcaps were there. I didn't put them back on because Let's be honest, I'm just gonna keep them for myself. Is this mirror all flopped out? Oh no, she's still in good shape. Not even broken. This glass is there, it's just rolled down. Back seat is missing, but it's back there at the bottom anyway. It's got the vinyl floor mat. Man, it's been a while since we had something with vinyl floor mat, which I do prefer over carpet. Much easier to clean, just get the pressure washer out. There's some mouse house in there. Check her out, pal. Looks like the seat does fold down flat. Ooh. A comb for you, Rico Suave. Rico Suave. Does it say anything on it? Nope, it's a goodie. We'll leave that for Mojo. Them old guys, they like carrying combs in their back pockets. Somebody, I don't know if this was the save paint on the farm, so they painted it with some yellow, so the scrap, ooh, that's loud. Scrapper didn't get it. Look at that seat. That thing, ugh. That side's all tore up, dang it. I was looking at the driver's side thinking, man, this thing's hardly got any miles. And then I see that side's wasted. I don't know why this is in there. Oh, it does have like the uh, shoulder belts that you hook up to your lap belts. I've never used them. Usually they're just stored up. Oh, it's got the wrap on the steering wheel. She's a power slide. 
Got the Wards Riverside add-on AC. How freaking sweet would it be if that worked? Oh, cassette deck duff with auto stop. What a deal. Missing the keys. Lighter's there. The uh, glove box is wired shut. Floyd's in Frankfurt. What year is that from? 1992. Got a calendar in here. Really ain't much in here other than some, some fecal matter. What are we storing in the old uh, glove box? Come on. What do we want? I want a set of uh, CT players. Ugh. Protecto plate at least. Ugh. What is that? Oh. oh, it's grandma's hair net. Isn't that what that is? You put that on your, on your hair when you're going to town so that, you know, your curls stay nice. First, oh, it'll be some cash. That's what I should have wished for. No cash. We got a new battery at OK Tire in 1991. Nice. Map of North Dakota, Rand McNally. Is Rand McNally still in business? Probably not. And this guy was always pulling cash out. Pioneer Seed, 1987. More cash withdrawals. Oh, some 1895 light bulbs. We'll be keeping them. Oh, yeah. Clip on sunglasses. Made in America. Polarized, even. Dang. Dang. What's it say? Oh, these were Lorraine's. I'm guessing that was her hairnet, too. This was uh, Wesley's, probably. World's biggest safety pin. More clip on sunglasses. Wes was a cool dude. Oh, man. Where are those wheels at? <sighs> Some slots with a white line out. That's what I'm talking about right there. The great performers, Phillips 66. Oh, here it is. This is what we want. This is a good paperwork. Still in the OG Chevrolet bag. What is this? Looks like they put some Dunlop nylon cord G78 14s on her. Load range B at one point. South Dakota vehicle registration. Renee Avery in Leeds, South Dakota. So, yeah, Leeds just up the road from Deadwood. So that makes sense. That was in 1983. What do we got here? They financed 698 bucks for it in 1982. So, yeah, I'm guessing that was Renee that financed it. 1968 Chevrolet Owner Protection Plan and New Vehicle Warranty. That's pretty sweet. I dig this old paperwork. It is nasty and gross in here and hot. I guess this is your punch card, your service records. Doesn't look like many of them were ever punched. What is this? Look at all these notes. Oh, you got the uh, firing order listed out there and which side they're on, 1843, 65, 72. August 19 of 76, they put the Ward's Grappler tires on. 48,000 miles. Changed oil May 15th of 76 with 47,500 miles. Greased it in March 16th, 1977 with 53,000 miles. Power flow gas filter, part number 331 with 53,000 miles. New cap and points, 54,000. Hair cleaner, Pennzoil. PH29 coast to coast oil filter at 60,000 miles. Man, 60,000 miles in uh, 1977. So this thing was nine years old. They weren't putting a ton of miles on it. 1040, that was the stuff to use back in the day. August 18th of 79, new points and plugs at 68,300 miles. Oh, there's the, it's the cover for the owner's manual that they were writing all this on. Look at all this stuff. New Dunlop tires, G7814, on uh, May 1st, 1972. It's all in cursive. The script of the past. New belt number 9580. The air conditioning belt was a 56A Gates. New tailpipe in May of 76. Oh, man. Well, that was 47,500 miles. Well, that's 475 bucks. That sounds like a lot of money back in 1976. That stuff's really cool. Oh, and it keeps going. Got rebuilt the carburetor August 21st, 1979 at 68,000 miles. I'm sure it's still fine. Speaking of that, how many miles it got? 34? Holy crap, it's 134K on her. Check the timing and the alignment. Carburetor overhauled again at 74,746 for $60. New front tires, glass belted, 88 bucks in 1981. 75,000 miles. 
New front brake shoes, new air conditioning belt again. Man, it was eating those things up. New alternator bearings. When was the last time you heard anybody putting alternator bearings in? Well, that's what they did in 1982. Even they got the part number for the uh, Rochester carburetor. It's a 41-146A, carb number B-702-8110 EBCH. That carb was really giving them some issues back then. These old manuals are even kind of cool to look through. The stuff that was different. All the options they had back then. Like not drinking your battery fluid like the uh, new operators may have. They better keep that with the car anyway. In good shape. Put her back in the plastic, kids. 134K. She's got some she's got some miles on her. Well back to the glove box. Ooh, an OJ glove. We hadn't seen one of those in a while. More light bulbs, 1156 or 1157? 1156. Yep. Oh, it must have got in an accident. Circle the damaged area. 71187 by the Huron Police Department. Whoops. More bulbs. More sunglasses. Dang. Well, how to make shortbread. If you need a recipe, hit us up. What? Oh, it's the insurance. They kept their insurance in this sleeve. Sweet. Insurance cards. Yep. Okay. I think we're done in there. Oh, it's even got the roll-out wing windows. They still work. What a deal. Okay. We got to get out of this thing. It's gross. Really no gauges. Uh, it's all lights. There is a fuel gauge. Oil and temp are just lights, it appears. Well, let's get some light on the subject. Fuel is a gauge. And that's it. 120 speedo though, she's a ripper. I'm guessing that uh, cluster is the same as your regular Chevelles or your Super Sports and whatnot. The speedo part anyway. I would hope that the nicer Chevelles had actual temp gauges and whatnot. This fender looks a lot better. A little rust in the dog leg. Pinhole there. A little whiskey dent up there. Of course, that bottom cup must be common for them to rot off. I honestly don't know Jack about these two bells. Let me ask you. Here's a little hooey in the bumper. Dang it. I was hoping that would be nice. 97. So, yeah, 25 years. Duff, you want to open the hood for me? Or are you taking a nap inside the car? You want to do the hood? That'd be great. You're a good kid. It's on the inside? All right, if you say so. Yeah, most definitely wasn't on the inside. He says it's right under there. Anywho, it's a small block. It's a two barrel. Uh, it says 307 on the air cleaner, but hopefully somebody swapped in, you know, a DZ 302. AC belt's not hooked up, unfortunately. Dang it. It does have, oh, that's the AC lines. I was gonna say, is that a inline block heater? Looks like the battery tray area is all rusted out, of course. Well, let's just get right to the point, kids, and see if it turns over. Small block Chevy, only been sitting 25 years. Easy peasy, right? Maybe. Uh-oh. Son of a biscuit. It's just stretching the belt. Wow. Okay. Maybe let's just throw a battery in it. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the carburetor looks like, because that's where most of the humidity would I to get into. Urgh. Well, the mice made a small nest in there. No big deal. This vehicle is equipped to reduce exhaust emissions. There you go. You are welcome, Greta. The uh, Ward's Riverside AC bracketry, top notch. Definitely does not look like it was made in some farmer's barn. Built by Chevrolet Tonawanda, the number one team. Oh, that advertising stuff's cool. I mean, if the carburetor's free, the engine should be free, right? Oh, the carburetor is very, very stiff. Not a good sign. Let's pull the dipstick out, see how that looks. Well, it's not really over full. It smells really gassy. So much for an easy week. 
Doesn't have a dual reservoir, master cylinder, which I believe started in 67. And it's got power steering. If all else fails, we get all the bracketry for short water pump stuff. And short water pump air conditioning has got to be worth tens of dollars to the right person, even if it's add-on. I guess crawl underneath and hook up the loser switch since we don't have keys. And hook a battery up and then prepare for disappointment. How can a small block be locked up that's had a hood on it and an air cleaner? So I'm sitting for only a mere 25 years. Barely even half my life. Coolant? Oh yeah. She's in there. It looks like oil though. Ugh. Ew. Ew. It's got the tenant 12 volt compressor on it. She's a York. The good stuff. That's what all the low riders use. Puddin's probably got one on some. No, he doesn't like the belt driven one. He likes electric pumps that go and they're noisy. Okay. Let's get a battery. The crazy Cajun himself is the battery sponsor this week. Should we clean these up? Yeah, I suppose we're gonna need all that cranking power to get this stuck engine turned over. Two red battery cables. When was the last time we had a red and a black battery cable? And that they were on the proper cables. It's been a while. Seems like we've been getting a lot of two blacks or two reds lately. No sparkage, that's good. All right, now we just gotta crawl underneath and hook up the loser switch. Duff, you wanna handle that? That'd be great. All right, new day. Same old Nomad. Got her on the hoist though, because I figured that would be easier to hook up our loser switch here to the Inside terminal on our starter. Please be good, little starter. And also I figured, you know, if this thing's stuck, it'll be easier to get the inspection cover off. Oh yeah, that's definitely full of mouse house. You can see it peeking out right there, I think. Yep, full of mouse house. And we can get that off and pry on it, but let's take a look at this thing while we're under here. I took the fuel line off, so if we do get it turned over, we're not gonna pull up any crappy old fuel. And look at this, they got the old radiator hose wrapped around the new one so it don't, apparently it's rubbed through that idler arm at one point. I don't know, but that hose is looking, it's not flexy, but it's got a lot of oil and such on it. Yeah, but yeah, everything else isn't too greasy. I mean, the engine is, but this stuff, on the steering and suspension isn't probably because it's never been greased does have a sway bar it's got some some hail damage under here uh i don't know if it's done some duke boy things down in hazard county <laughs> or what fram ph30 oil filter maybe that's why it's locked up oh there's a hole right there where did the uh ring gear rub through the inspection cover but that made some noise. Yeah, this thing's, she's sent it a few times. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. See, this is what they got right. They got a drain plug on the old uh, power slide. Way to go, GM. Floors, a little soft. A little soft. Whoever buys this thing, be prepared to put floors in. One piece drive shaft. That seems pretty tight, so that's good. Power slides, you know, a grease ball, as usual. Sure enough, single exhaust, big old rotted out muffler. Frame looks solid. Rockers look good. Yeah, a little winged up back here. Oh, there's a little rot in the inner rocker over there. No big deal. Coil springs, Camaro's reliefs, Nova's reliefs, Chevelle's, and big cars, you know, the Impala's coil spring. Looks like we could use a pinion seal. Man, no number nine wire holding exhaust up. I'm impressed. Rear floors, ooh. Rear floors are good. Yeah, just the front floors. 10 bolt, two, four, five, yep. 10 bolt, limited slip, probably not. Doesn't appear so. Uh, I don't know what gear ratio. I don't know why everybody's got to throw the tags away when they open up the rear cover. Looks like it's still got the old Delco pleasurizers in there. Rear floor, 
Yeah, not good. There is a spare tire in there, a spare belt, and the tire iron, and uh, a very large mouse nest. It may explain why we caught seven mice in the last week. What do you think about all those mouses that we've been catching? You're not doing your job. You're supposed to be catching them. But yeah, that was not me shoving it around either. That must have been the last guy who shoved her in the trees. But we need to patch that up. There's our fuel tank. Uh, is that a nail? Yeah, that's, that's probably a nail wedged in the bottom of the tank. Plug in a hole. It does look like it's been leaking. So that explains why no fuel came out maybe when we unhooked the line up there. Wow, that's in a real good spot, you know? Rear quarter shot, matching the gas tank. Boom, boom. Matching the gas tank. Boom, boom. Tailpipe's gonna be a little bit restricted. Not too bad. Oh, we got two spare tires. What a deal, Duff. How excited are you about that? Okay, that's save that for your OnlyFans page. Yeah, spare tire wells rotted out, but there's a spare tire in there. Oh, what a deal. Anything else? Throw back a lattes? Nope. I don't know why everybody asks how frames are when they buy a car, but up here, you know, frames don't really get rotten. I've seen rotten frames on like 65, six Fords, and then like 35 to 40 Ford frames, but you know, those things are 80 years old. Yeah, and we don't really have rusty frames up here other than the uh, 97 Expedition that we're currently uh, towing everything with, but minor details. Oh, speaking of restricted exhaust, yowza. I might just have to take the old restrictor plate out of the Red Dragon here. Took the restrictor plate off, give the Red Dragon a little more juice, but uh, let's keep that on the down low. It's not exactly street legal. Let her eat. All right, let's let it down and hit the loser switch. See what happens. Get those cute little 10 inch drum brakes. Maybe they're even nines. Just little guys. He just a little guy. Yeah, here we go, moment of truth. The uh, Bendix isn't even kicking in. That's hard on the ears. She's awful slow and growly. I think we'll pull some plugs out and put some oil down there. And uh, looby doob those cylinders. That did not sound good. We haven't opened up a starter for a while, so I guess we're due. All right, pull some plugs out, see what those look like. And throw some oil in there. Turn it over, hopefully it spins over a little bit faster. And we'll go from there. So plugs all look pretty good. A little sooty, getting plenty of fuel. Except for the number two here. She's an oil burner. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, definitely a lot of depository going on in the old AC R45S. But they all are matching spark plugs, so uh, that kind of tells me that this thing, you know, wasn't running super terribly, that they were swapping different plugs out one or two at a time. At least they were doing eight at a time. Sprayed some squirrel piss down all the cylinder throatages and got it sprayed down the throatage of the carbonator. And we got that thing loosened up pretty dang good. Wa pow! Wa pow! So now I think we'll clean up this one spark plug with the wire wheel and then we'll probably start cranking it over and see if we can't get some sparkage. And we're just gonna go for a ride. Just that easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Spent way more time with a wire wheel and a pick cleaning the debris out of there than the old R45 Sierra is worth, but it's done. I like cleaning up what you got. Everybody's like, ah, throwing new plugs, wires, yada, yada, yada. I just want to show you guys that you can get this stuff running without spending much money. 
you know, you got to have a new battery. You're going to have to buy some gas. But you don't need to buy points, plugs, wires, belts, hoses, yada, yada, yada. You don't. Like, oil changes. Like, that oil's freaking fine. Speaking of oil, I noticed there's this plastic around the oil fill cap. And uh, in the oil fill cap. So I'm guessing this thing, she's got a little blow-by. Usually people will put that in there to, you know, keep oil from coming out. The bad news is uh, there's some internal damage to this engine probably, which creates that blow-by and keeping that oil in there or blocking this off really doesn't uh, do much. I don't think that it's supposed to breathe through that cap. It's supposed to come out through the PCV or it's supposed to come out of the valve cover and in the air cleaner and burn it or uh, out of the PCV, positive crankcase ventilation. And... Uh, on the bottom side of the carburetor and burn it there. It's not supposed to be coming through here. Anywho, so I'm guessing this thing, she's a, she's an oil burner, as we saw in the number two spark plug. So now, I think we'll hook up our jumper wire here, since we don't have a key, and we'll crank it over to see if we get any spark. What are the odds it's got spark after sitting for 25 years? Not very good. Our yellow wire had a rough week last week on Little Swayze or whatever we're calling that thing. It uh, got burnt on the manifold a couple times. No big deal. Disappointment, that's what we got. Well, let's spit a little oil out on number one. That coil, anywho. So we got some compression there, that's good. Where is the coil wire? Here we go. What the French toast? How could there be a bad connection on that rusty battery cable? All right, let's try this with the Third time's a charm, right? And you can tell how sticky it is when you let off the loser switch. She just goes, womp, and just stops right now. So if uh, the rings were not so hot before, they're gonna be real lukewarm now, at best. She's gonna be a choocher. All right, let's take the cap off and do the old Mortsky flick. Pop our cap off. Let's see what lies beneath. A rotor, some uh, spider nests or something. I don't know. It's a Delco Remy cap, so that's good, right? We got power to the point, so let's flick them a couple times. Yeah, let's pull this rotor. Sometimes it's easier to get at the points by taking the rotor off, especially when we have these ginormous rotors that GM ran in this vintage. I do prefer the rotors so that you don't need any tools to take off. There you go. Fresh overhaul. I'm gonna bump it over, get ourselves a little bit better access. Points are opening and closing. We're getting some sparkage. When I do that, how about now? Oh, that starter sounds angry. I think we're gonna have to file them a bit, unfortunately. I'm gonna go get the Hanzi file. Got our power wire unhooked. Turn it over so she's on the base. Looks like it already is. Give a couple good flicks. Hook up our power wire. Now let's see if we got some sparkage. Bet we do. Son of a biscuit. What the French toast? I think my screwdriver in there, but we get spark. Sure enough. Oh, what the hey? You guys just want me to get electrocuted, don't you? By the power of Grey Skull. Ow! Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. I don't know why it's shocking me. We ain't doing that this week. No siree, Bob. Well, I guess we'll clean them up some more. I refuse to put new points in. No way. It's out of the budget. So, here's where I like myself. If we just flick them with that up there. Is the coil working? Yep. It's not the coil. 
Never put a new coil in. Ow! I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, coils, they hurt. And there's about a 0.00025% chance that your coil's ever bad on one of these. It's never the coil. I got a shelf full of new coils and it's, it's, they're only multiplying. They're never, it's never the coil. Never the coil. <laughs> You can see we get a little, it's not, it's a week. There it's coming to. What the heck? It's coming around. Okay, I don't have a ton of faith in these points. And there is a smoke currently coming off of them. I feel like we shouldn't be getting smoke out of the distributor like that. So we're just gonna unhook the power wire here, hook it up to our throttle cable, which should be grounded out. Not be grounded out, like insulated, yeah. So that's, that's fine. We're just gonna put it all back together. It's gonna be good, maybe. Okay, let's see if we got spark with the cap back on. <laughs> It's not great, but we got spark. Let's put some plugs in, get a hot sauce, do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. I think we're close. Give her a shot of a purple drank here. Try to fill up the bowl. Since we don't have a fuel system hooked up, it's not gonna run for very long. Unless we bottle feed her. And I'm not any good at bottle feeding. Not gonna lie. Oh! I got the coil of wire. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Too easy. Just, just too easy. And the small block Chevys just want to live. Even if they were a little sticky and they have a terrible set of points in there. So can't get her running a little bit longer this time. <laughs> dancing around water pump she's toasty toasty how about that got her back to life what have you been doing out carousing around looking for rabbits and fecal matter to roll in yeah she sounds pretty good we're sitting for 25 years other than i thought that was valve train or like lower end noise but it's definitely the water pump. You can see it dancing around in there. So, I don't know if we're gonna put one on there. I will think about it. We gotta hook up a fuel system. Yeah, these small blocks. So easy, even a caveman could do it. A caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh no, I, not cool. I did okay, I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do for a fuel system. Duff, why didn't you tell me that the tailpipe cam was no good? Oh. He knows what's up. Well, a little mouse house came out up there and a little back here. We're gonna have to take that muffler off there. That's what Duff says. Oh, you wanna see if Fivel's still in said muffler? Dig in there, get after it. All right, let me get the hoist out of the way for you. Did you get him? No? Where's he at? Where's Fivel? Get him. Get that mouse. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? What, which way did it go, George? Which way did it go? Max would have had him by now. We're not going to the fuel system. Let's let's resolve this exhaust issue. I'm gonna get the reciprocating saw because Sawzall is a patented name. 
We're gonna get that out of there. We're gonna leave this chunk of pipe in there just for, cause it's, you know, pretty sturdy and it'll be quieter for us up here than the people back. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be quieter for Duff and I. Cause that's what we're all about. Saving our ears in the environment. She's a little warm, a little warm. And then, yeah, I think it just kicked a bunch of mouse house out of there. How do, how do mice get in there? They go in by the starter. Is that why the starter sounds so freaking terrible? I don't know, but there always is a mouse house behind that inspection cover. Never fails. Let's uh, install the exhaust delete. Now we're gonna move on to the fuel system. So let's see what kind of condition this tank is internally. And let's also destroy a gas cap. Because we got no keys. I'm not gonna check the ashtray or above the visor or under the seat or anywhere else. Let's see how this goes. Any ideas, pal? Just pry the snot out of it with a big old pliers of sorts. Okay, talk me into it. That was easy. That was easy. Didn't even get to wreck anything. Sad day. It might not even, oh, you can't see the bottom. But from what I can see, it's not good. Let's get the schlong out and check it out. For when you gotta get in there real nice and deep like. Get in there nice and deep like. The schlong. Here's how the bottom of the tank looks. There's our float. And uh, yeah, don't look that bad. There's a little varnish in there. So I think this tank might be okay if somebody wanted to play with it. That being said, I think we're just gonna go with the old reliable boat tank because there's already a hole in the passenger floor to feed a uh, chunk of hose through and we don't have to waste a bunch of gas in this tank if it don't work because you know that's just below four bucks now. So, I mean, at least we know, or we know for the next guy that this tank is probably salvageable, but maybe it was leaking and that's why they parked it. That's why that nail is underneath there. I can't imagine that a nail got just thrown up by the tire and wedged underneath the tank like that. I don't know. And it probably would be good to pressure wash this tank out, pull the tank out, pull the sending unit, pressure wash the real good, get rid of some of that varnish and test the sending unit. Yeah, anyway, boat tank time. But thanks a lot, test long. I just found out that this thing has a camera on the side and a camera on the end. I couldn't figure out why I was aiming at the bottom of the tank. And uh, it's because I had the side camera on. How neat is that? How neat is that? Learn something new every day. We got a marine tank on the floor. Battery in here temporarily. I'm hoping that the stock mechanical fuel pump will pick up fuel so we don't have to hook up electrical to that pump, run the electric pump. We're getting fuel up here. I don't know if the float's sticking or uh, there's just that many orifices to leak out of on this thing, but let's see if she lights off and not in the uh, matching the gas tank boom boom way. Let's give the old Neil and seat a tap. Take it and you'll like it. Seems to have slowed the leak down. Fixed it. It's the lug nut. Fixed it. All right. Looks like it's still getting fuel. It actually sounds pretty good. We should just take that fan belt off, huh? Let's do that. We don't have to hear that rattle anyway. 
All right. I don't think our fuel pump's doing its job. All right, got our electric pump hooked up. Needs a couple pumps. Fuel pump and a water pump. Probably an accelerator pump. Well, now I want to run. Sure, it's got spark. It's always got spark. Let's go somewhere that doesn't have fuel all over it. Oh yeah, mean spark. Those points, they might have come around. Oh yeah, accelerator pump ain't really doing its job. What was that noise? Interesting. We got an oil leak. Shut everything down. It shouldn't be the oil line like on Crazy Swayze because this has just got a light on the dash. So there's no line back there. Looks like it's coming from around the oil. Let's lift her up. Have a look, see. What do you say? Uh, judging by the size of that puddle and the continuous trickle, it should be easy to find. Did our Fram filter give up the ghost? Did the bottom rust out of that filter? Let's take a look. Yep. Look at that. Freaking Fram. It's probably not the Fram filter's fault. Well, I mean, if we're gonna spin a filter on, we could change the oil. Does that blow our budget though? I don't know. I'm gonna spin that filter off and we'll spin a new one on. And I think we're gonna call her a night. We'll think about it. If we're gonna actually change the oil on this thing. It's a small block. It's freaking fine. If I had a use filter around, I'd spin it on there. I wonder if I can find a use filter somewhere. Got one off a of 3800 laying here. I suppose that'll fit. Probably not. Well, we got our old pH 30 off. I was hoping that since that hole in there, when you'd spin it off, it wouldn't leak around the seal, but no such luck. Didn't get too dirty. Hey, and the gasket came off with it. So that's a plus. Guess what I found in my stash? A Chev 350 PH30. No idea where that come from, but we're gonna use it. It's even got the, what do they call that? The Sure Grip. Isn't that what Mopar calls their limited slip? And look at this. Premium quality Phillips 66 drop arctic oil. I wonder what vintage this is from. GF2. API service SJ and SH. This is vintage. I bet there's not a website on this stuff. I'm guessing early 90s, maybe mid 90s. But yeah, keep your vintage GM all vintage. We are definitely not changing oil. We will put one quart of new old stock oil on it though. I'll even rub a little on the gasket just for the internet. Let's do a little science project. Let's see if we can take our scratch owl here. It's a Stanley. Let's see if we can poke through that filter. See if it really did rust out. I suppose water could have sat at the bottom and those things are, I assume, thinner than the oil pan. Where was that leak at? Right there. Yep. Well, maybe that was just the lowest point. I don't know if this is really a science project. There's definitely a hole there. We could cut it apart, see what's rusty on the inside, but we're not gonna. I don't really care for Fram filters, but this, you know, really isn't a filter issue. It's just a old car that sat in the grass and filter rusted out issue. That's a new one to me though. Comment down below if you've ever seen a filter rust through on something. All right, I think we're calling it a night. Well, we are back. It is a sweltering, muggy day here in Podunk, North Dakota. Last thing we left off on was the oil filter was leaking, so we spun a new Framtastic filter on there, pH 30. Put some new old stock Trop Arctic 5W30, premium quality. 
Oh, they even call it motor oil, even though it's an engine. And motors are electric. Don't start the uh, engine cycle argument. Let's see if we can't get this thing wired up a little bit so we can start it from inside the car and kill it from inside the car. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is pull the connector off the back of the ignition switch. We'll figure out which one's power. I think it's the red one. Purple one's gonna be crank. And then what is it? Yellow or black, that's ignition. And then we'll, we'll do our little jumper wire scenario. And we'll get that figured out. And maybe the transmission will work. Maybe it won't. Maybe we should check that. That works first. No, that would, that would make too much sense. And brakes, we, we know those are gonna be just fine. Let's pull the cap off the uh, master cylinder just to see what do we got behind door number three. It's so stiff. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Oh, no way. Well, the front reservoir has fluid in it. So, there might be a chance. Could it be two cars in a row? Because it helps when they only sit for 25 and 27 years versus 50. Let's throw a little dot three in there. See what happens. Both reservoirs are the same size, but they got different size lines. It's on the 3 16 line, so I'm guessing it's for the front brakes? Maybe, I don't know. Just put that back on there, pretend like they're fine. Squeezy lemon squeezy. Why is this not opening? Something's unhappy. You gonna come check it out? You could smell that nasty interior. Yeah. Let's hit the pedal, and see what happens. Here goes nothing. Doesn't go to the floor. We might be okay. Sweet. Oh, the ignition switch is way up there. Plus we got the Ward's Riverside ACM unit in the way, so real excited about this. Here's what we got going on. We got a purple wire, which is our crank, hooked up to our green wire. All these are is 14 gauge wire with a male spade on the end. A red wire goes to our red wire, which is power. And pink, pink is the ignition, duh. And that's hooked up to our yellow wire. But watch this. This thing's been sitting for a couple days. And you take your red, twist it to our yellow, so that's gonna power up our ignition. See that little spark there? Touch it to green. I didn't pump the gas or nothing. I mean, it only did it one time, but uh, yeah, I think it's because when we did, what we determined the other night that our fuel pump isn't working, so we got to hook our electric one up. Anywho. Yeah, let's see if we can't get it running and test out the transfusion. Well, the oil light comes on. Hopefully it goes off once we get it running. Goes out right when we start cranking it. I don't think we're getting enough fuel. Maybe we're getting too much fuel. Probably not enough. All right, I'm gonna play around with this for a bit. Not the headliner. Why is it always the seam right by my eyeballs that gets torn out? Get it running and then uh, test the transmission. Oh, you heard it running now. You wanna go for a RIDE, don't you? Are we getting fuel up here? Doesn't look like it. Don't we'll have to worry about a fan without that belt on at least. take the line off try to figure out why we ain't got no fuelage up here oh 
Well, she's a little scuzzy down there, so we'll try to sop some of that up. And, I don't know. See what we can do from there. Oh yeah, you can see all that rust that's in there. We're gonna have to blow that out. We're taking it apart and clean it. Cause I'm guessing that's blocking some passageways. We're not carburetor experts, so. We'll just leave that up to the folks like Chin and Wes and whatnot. Try to get as clean as we can, and then try to blow out them passageways, and that should help. Our float stuck. Fixed it. Okay, we know we're getting fuel now, so let's hook up our ignition. You know, some sparks around that raw fuel should be good. Let's see what happens. Just that idle just a bit. See if that makes her happier. Well, 307's got a hog eight cam in her. Transfusion seems to be full. Took about three quarts, per usual. Let's uh, see if the stick makes the tire go around. Seven's getting warm. Let's put a fan belt on it, throw some water at it, and maybe wash it, you know, to cool it off and such. Seemed like a pretty good idea, huh? And then we'll be able to go for a rip ski. Yeah. He heard me talking about it. There you are. Are we ready yet, he says? Getting close. We're just gonna put a belt on it and then uh, put some coolant in it. What do you see, some leaks under there? Or critters. Oh my gosh. Look at all the stuff that came out of the uh, inspection cover. Yeah, right where Duff's at. That is a lot of mouse matter. Okay, let's put that belt on and put some coolant in it. Not put a water pump in it and go for a rat. What do you think, Duffel up, guess? Should we see if it'll 
Make a lap around the yard. Dang right. Load up. No, I promise. It'll at least make it out of the shop. Maybe. I know, there's a battery on your seat. We're just gonna have to get cozy. Okay, can you give me just a little bit more room? Yeah, please. No? Okay, sorry. I guess we'll sit over here. Ugh, between this roof and the duff, and everything else. I'm pretty excited about this. Let's just make it to the other end of the sh freaking shop. All right. I'm gonna move that battery for when we go for a real ride because it's too cozy for two of us. What'd you think? Acceptable? Yeah, it's no Buick. I'm sorry. Where's the gal day at, Duff? Should have had you do this. There it is. Ugh. Hot mouse poop. <laughs> As if I wasn't gross enough. A little hot water mixed in with some lichens. Now I'm real gross. I'm gonna have to ask the silver fox why the lichens only grow on steel and not chrome surfaces or aluminum. I don't know. If you know why lichens only grow on the body panels and not the grill and the bumpers, comment down below. Anywho, yeah, the inside's gonna be a little wet and the points are probably gonna be wet, so it's not gonna start, most likely. So I think we're just gonna let this thing drip dry for a little bit here and maybe go dink around with something else. What should we do, Duff? Maybe have a sandwich. We'll see. I'm gonna think about it real hard. We gotta get this thing wrapped up though, cause uh, we're running out of time this week and a long week of appointments and chaos and dragging other garbage home on the Dodge. I think that one's gonna be on the second channel. So if you wanna see those shenanigans, go check it out. More Mortsky repair. I think we did a stuck receiver hitch this week. That was a lot of fun. I was sweating even worse than this. So yeah, check that channel out for some behind the scenes stuff. Speaking of behind the scenes, Duff is behind the new pallet racking, just hanging out in the shade. Okay, see you in a little bit. You're such a goof. What am I gonna do all the work around here? Cause you're the star. And I'm back. Looks like I found what I'm gonna do for a little bit here is uh, clean up the mouse house and oil leaks and rust piles from where this thing was parked. Sweet. Also, shout out to the uh, subscriber who sent us a square body fender and his creativity for packaging it. How about that? It's a bicycle box stuff. Who'd have thunk? Also, somebody bought a trash can, so we gotta ship that out too. It's hard to tell what's in there. I'm sure we won't get questioned when we give that to UPS. On a side note, you're pretty chummy with the UPS guy. He gives you treats, so Duff jumps right into his big brown van. Yeah, everybody loves the Duff. Let this thing dry out. And while I was washing it, I don't know, I guess 
no real new surprises. There's a couple uh, small dents that we noticed. I think there was one on the tailgate back here. Yeah, she cleaned up pretty good. Those windows are super dirty on the inside. We never tried to open the tailgate, and I don't think we're gonna try, because we don't want to go back there. A little itty bitty, I don't know, that isn't even a dent. I think there was, there'd been some work in that quarter on the other side back in the day. A little dent there. Yeah. It's unfortunate you can't pressure wash the rust off, huh, Duff? He just wants to go for an RID. But it looks a lot better now that it's semi one color. The roof, she's pretty faded up. I wonder if the old Comet wash from David Freiberger would work to make that one color again. That would probably just get rid of the surface rust who knows but yeah the engine bay cleaned up real nice very nice okay i think we're uh getting pretty close to going for a rip ski what do you think oh yeah i moved the battery to the floor so that duff can sit in uh, his goodness of seat over there and the seat dried up I should probably wipe off the windshield a little bit so i can see out of it who knows i've never seen it get that icky up top like that you know usually it kind of delaminates like that but it's like brown and green and nastier on the edge up there who knows whoever gets this thing is going to have a cleaning project right duff right hey we even put the air cleaner back on that's like a first so those points dried out all right we're gonna find out Ooh, some hinges need some lube Let's do this. Load up. Ugh. We should have gorilla taped the headliner before we took it off. Oh. I'm all itchy now that I'm in here. All right. <clears throat> what are the odds? This thing's points aren't sopping wet, Duff. Twist our wires together. some fire should we hook up our fuel pump do we need that I don't know oh that excuse me pardon me all right fuel pump sucked up now I'll let go why It was popping. Let me give her a tickle of some hot sauce. Now we'll let go. Maybe we're not getting spark. It popped a couple times. And our battery's unhappy. Gobs of spark coming off the coil. Must be flooded. There we go. Just pin it to win it. Come on, baby. You know you want to. Okay, we need a different battery. So I did top this thing off with water last night. And it's right up where it was. It didn't hardly take any, which is very hard to believe. As bad as the bearings are in that thing, I feel like it should be pouring out the weep hole in that water pump. But maybe it's so full of rust, it won't weep. Who knows? Well, we got the Florida man swapped into the battery position. Give her a shot of brake cleaner. Hopefully that'll dry it out. I don't know. An ignition switch would be handy as well. Here we go. So close. Something's wet that uh, doesn't want to be. I don't know what your problem is. It's like that timing's off. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna pull the distributor cap, blow it underneath there. Maybe. I 
don't know. Why does it kick back like that? Like the timing's off. I doubt we uh, adjusted the timing with the pressure washer. Well, this might be our issue. That's a lot of condensation. So what fixes that? Not hot sauce. Brake cleaner with an actual button on it. Okay, I'm gonna blow that out with this. And it's gonna take right off. Electricity and humidity don't mix, kids. Tech tip of the day, if you're gonna pressure wash an engine and you wanna start it within the next 24 hours, uh, spray some WD-40 on the distributor cap on the outside first, because WD stands for water displacement. And other than cleaning, that's about all that stuff is good for. So remember that. Next time you're gonna pressure wash your engine bay at the uh, local car wash, hose down your uh, distributor cap with some WD-40 so you don't have to look like an idiot trying to get your car started when there's a whole line of people behind you. You're welcome. It's gonna go. You know, we got a battery and a gas tank up here. What's the worst could happen? Told ya. It's gotta sit like it's a lowrider. It's the headliner. Don't screw up your eyeliner. Nothing with that stupid seat there. Farm truck exhaust sounds so good. A little two barrel could use a little tuning. Got about an inch or half of rain last night, so it should be good and sloppy out here. Mojo's gonna be mad or tearing up the yard. Totally rolled with you. That power steering is nice. We never even checked it. Well, first time on the road after sitting for 25 years. Here we go. We'll hit second. There we go. You can't kill a power slide. Speedo works. 45.
here is throwing some brake fluid. Clean up the spark plugs. Throw fuel pump on it. Hey, it's got a hot light and it's not lit up. Railroad tracks! Oh, sorry. Didn't give you much more at that time. My bad. Yeah. Oh, and an oil filter and a quart of, not even a full quart, half a quart of oil. This thing didn't take much. Small block Chevy. If you want to do a wheel and run or a revival on your own, get a small block Chevy. They just, you want to live. This thing, they live for being revived. If that makes any sense. So simple, even Ryan at Iowa Classic Cars can get them running. But you don't need to put points in, kids. It's just a myth. Just clean the ones you got. Want to trip the tires? Even. What do you think, Duff? Pretty good. Yeah. Duff said, try doing a burnout. He's gonna watch from the outside to see if the tire's spinning. Div will start again. And uh, it's not cranking over. Why is that? Did we melt the wire off the distributor or the starter? Why you no crank? Must be the neutral safety switch or something. I don't know. Get it for a little bit. You know how you really get them to burn? I don't like it. Why did it do it for a little bit? Well, we gave it a shot. It did it for a second. To be honest, I'm really impressed that it uh, caught rubber even just a little bit, especially at the corner outside. So we tried. Power glide's just not good for burnouts. Oh well. The legacy lives on of the Riviera. Oh yeah, and Pat Swayze's character in that movie, John Dalton, we found the format in the trunk of the car that said John. So I mean, this is a sign. We gotta call that car Dalton. Also, if you wanna own a Riviera, or a 68 Chevelle Nomads custom station wagon. Hit us up. Check the description down below. Mortsgearpair at gmail.com. Price and availability listed down there as well. Oh, look at She did just a cute little patch. I mean, look at the diggers we're turning there, you know? I'm just going to tear up the concrete. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. We got a 1968 Chevelle, our first Chevelle, going for the first time in 25 years. I'd like to say that it wasn't a struggle, but they're all, they're all a struggle in their own different ways. This one went pretty well. Like I said, got to own my first Nomad, so 
We just need to find ourselves a 55 Nomad. If you know where one of those are that's affordable, and by affordable, I mean four digit cars, you know, maybe. You know, Cause that goes to 9,999. You should be able to get a 55 Nomad for that, right? Probably not. And our first 307 on the channel. So many firsts this week. All right. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. Is that fun, Doc? I'd crack a sandwich, but it's eight in the morning, so we don't want to start that early. Not judging any of you that do. Chevelle wagons are fun.